Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate. All praises to Allah, the creator of the universes and their sustainer, the provider of believers and unbelievers. And may his choicest blessings be on the seal of his prophets, the last of his messengers and his holy progeny. We have been discussing that portion of Dua'i Kumail in which Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam is discussing those sins and is seeking forgiveness of those sins which call for immediate reprisal from Allah glorified and exalted. The consequences of, their, of those sins are such that they flow immediately. And we have seen a number of examples. The paragraph, the sentence we are dealing with is a sentence in which Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam teaches us to pray to Allah saying Allahumma frilliya dhunub allati tughayyiru al-ni'am No, no, the, par the sentence we are discussing is one in which he teaches us to say Allahumma frilliya dhunub allati tunzilu al-ni'am Forgive me those sins as bring down calamities. And in that context we have seen sins which uh, breach of a covenant, manifestation of shameful conduct and publication of falsehood. And we have three more to, to cover. Well, publication of falsehood, as we have already covered, is, is, is very important. But particularly to publish a hadith which is false, knowing it to be false, you can see how much harm that can do because because it then misleads the people for centuries, for centuries. Debates flow on which hadith is, is genuine, which is not genuine. And if a hadith which is false and concocted is presented as genuine and people follow it, then the consequence of people following a false hadith flows onto the person who concocted it and everybody who helped in spreading it, knowing it to be false. Well, but that phrase knowing it to be false has its own connotations because knowing it to be false does not necessarily mean that one must have lived in the time of the Holy Prophet for example if it was his hadith that was concocted and known that that hadith is, is a concocted one. So, so it is important that the, 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 the concoction should not take place at all because if a hadith is manifestly inaccurate, for example, that it is contrary to a verse of the Holy Quran or manifestly incorrect because it is contrary to another hadith of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, which is unanimously regarded as authentic, then to publish it carries its own consequences. And those consequences flow over centuries and hence the importance of it. The, the, the next sin that Amir al-Mu'mineen salam discusses is giving judgment contrary to Allah's revelation. A Kavi is appointed to judge primarily because of his knowledge. His knowledge of what is Allah's rule on the particular point, point of fiqh. If fiqh is involved, point of criminal law, if that is the law that is, that is uh, involved before him, in the case before him, well, the, the responsibility to judge fairly is so great that in Muslim jurisdictions, a Qadi is usually a fakir, a person who is learned in the law. Now, if he gives judgments which are contrary to the, to the laws of Allah glorified and exalted, which, which are contrary to the revelation of, of Allah glorified and exalted, and, and, and on which are based the, the sunnah of uh, the Holy Prophet and the teachings of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, then the consequence is that there is an injustice. And a society which is based on an injustice is never to, to foster and prosper Hence the importance of having people who are learned in the law, but that is not enough. There must be people who are God-fearing, people who have taqwa, 
who know that a wrong judgment on their part will trigger the wrath of Allah glorified and exalted. And hence the importance that whatever judgment they give is in accordance with the, with the rulings of Allah glorified and exalted. When decisions are taken by, by uh, judges, which are decisions calculated to please the ruler of the time and not to, uh, to please Allah glorified and exalted, then immediately those consequences flow, which Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam talks about, saying, Allahumma firliya dhanub allati tunzilun niqam, forgive me those sins that bring down calamity. And we have seen that when, when decisions are made contrary to the pleasure of Allah glorified and exalted, contrary to the rulings and of Allah glorified and exalted, calamities flow very soon. Uh, 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 a clear example, shining example, is the way in which fatwas were given by Kavis in the time of Yazid when he sought their ruling that killing Imam Hussain salam was lawful because Ma'adullah Ta'ala only because he refused to make bay'ah of Yazid. Yazid was a person whose bay'ah was impossible. No Muslim in his senses could have made bay'ah of Yazid. And if the Muslims had stood up and said, no, you do not follow the Holy Quran. You do not follow the Sunnah of the of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. You do not do what is just. You 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 spend money which is khums money, zakat money, money meant for the poor people for your own purposes, and you indulge in corruption. You openly indulge in it, and and the list is endless, as it were. If they did turn around and say that to him, you can imagine what would have been the consequence of Islam today. What shape Islam would have had in the world today? Alhamdulillah, Islam is making progress in the world today despite those disadvantages. So you can imagine if, if, uh, if those wrongs had not taken place, if Imam Hussain salam, had not been murdered in the way he was murdered, if Yazid was not allowed to prevail with the wrongs that he was doing, the state of Islam would have been different. But indeed, indeed, he was allowed to continue. The people did not object. He got Qadis to issue rulings that killing Imam Hussein salam, was lawful. Qadi Shuray, for example, the Chief Justice of the time, uh, issued a fatwa that killing Imam Hussein salam, was lawful. And people came out without a second thought to kill Imam Hussein. Salam. The only wrong Imam Hussein, salam, ta'ala, if it was a wrong uh, uh, that he perpetrated, was to say that he would not make bay'ah of Yazid. Because Yazid was was not capable of uh, of becoming a caliph of the of the Muslims because he sinned openly. There was no command of Allah glorified and exalted that he fulfilled openly and publicly, and there was no command of Allah to prohibit anything which he did not indulge in publicly. For example, serving intoxicating liquor and consuming intoxicating liquor openly in his in his in his. Uh, in his uh, courts. Well, so when a situation arises in which wrong judgments are delivered only to please the Khalif of the time and not Allah glorified and exalted and the people do not object, then Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam warns that the consequence of it immediately is is tunzilun niqam. Tunzilun niqam calamities descend from 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 all over the place and we saw that happen to to yazid we saw the calamities that fell on the muslim ummah immediately immediately matters of 2 3 years immediately after the assassination of imam hussein alayhi salam so indeed and those were the worldly consequences. The accounting on the Day of Judgment is, is still to come as Bibi Zainab alayhi salam, the sister of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, 
said to Yazid in open court, in his own court in Damascus, when she delivered her speech, saying that you are, 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 are proud today, are arrogant, thinking that you have been successful. But you will be questioned by Allah on the Day of Judgment. And you will be questioned at a time when the one presenting the complaint against you will be the Holy Prophet himself, peace be upon him and his progeny. And you will be questioned about your, about your deeds. She warned him. And, and that was a glorious uh, piece of speech that Bibi Zainab al-Assadam made because she made us conscious of the fact that these acts which are perpetrated by those in power thinking they are, they are, they are powerful to remember that there will be a day when there will be a questioning for each of those acts. And she put it so well that it will be a day on which the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, will be the prosecutor. She w he will be the complainant, to be, more exact, to be more exact, complaining about the murder of Imam Hussein alayhi salam by Yazid. So these consequences will come when they will come. In the meantime in the world, Tunzilun Niqam, the, the calamities of Allah descend almost, almost immediately. So Allah glorified and exalted does not leave wrong to be perpetrated in the world and not to be not to be resisted, not to be not not, not to be arrested by uh, by Allah glorified and exalted. And so these consequences flow almost almost instantly. One one example of, of a wrong decision is the decision on the on the murder of uh, of, of uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. I cited that example because it is an overwhelming example and it is a public example known by everybody in which in which the judgment was given that was palpably wrong and and the consequences that flowed from that judgment so that is the fourth sin that is discussed um, in, in this context the fifth one is refusing preventing refusing or preventing the payment of zakat now, zakat is an important um, teaching of Islam. Indeed, indeed, whenever in the holy book there is the injunction for salah, which is, which is a paramount uh, teaching of Islam, we, we are creatures of Allah glorified and exalted, we worship him. And we worship him not the way we want to worship him, because we are creatures. We can only worship our creator the way the creator wishes to be worshipped, the way the creator thinks is the proper way to worship him. And we worship Allah glorified and exalted in the way he has demanded of us that we worship him in the Holy Quran and in the Ahadith of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and his progeny. And the method of, of the, the paramount method um, of, of worshipping him is Salah. And whenever that aspect of Salah has been mentioned in the Holy Quran, one finds Sakat mentioned with it. So that Allah glorified and exalted says, you purify your soul by purifying the income that you have made for your sustenance in this world. Because it is that sustenance that creates the flesh and blood, which remains pure if Sakat has been paid from it. Now, therefore, those who challenge zakat wrongfully, contrary to the teachings of Allah, those who resist, they not only pr refuse to pay zakat themselves, they prevent others from paying. And, and preventing is not necessarily physical prevention, but by, by, by corroding their minds, by saying that no, zakat is not, is not uh, wajib, by saying that zakat is not needed to, need to have to be paid at all, when indeed, indeed, Allah glorified and exalted could have given the money to those to whom zakat is to be paid himself. If, we, if he could give money to the person who has become rich enough to have to pay zakat, he could have provided money to the person who is poor and needs zakat. But this is a test on those who have been given money. Do they pay zakat? Do, do, they, do they obey the command of Allah, glorified and exalted? And hence, and hence the, the, the reflection that if every Muslim who has to pay zakat actually 
paid zakat as he ought to, there would be no poor Muslim in the world today. This is the scheme, this is the divine providential scheme under which people whom he creates are provided for. And they are provided for even in fiqh, that, uh, that uh, people pay homes, they pay zakat so that those in need are, 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 are catered for. Allah could have catered for them himself, but he gives us the opportunity to do so. He provides us the resources, the money that we give in zakat is money he has provided us. He provides us that provision so that from that provision we pay to those who are needy and earn the, the pleasure and thawab from Allah glorified and exalted. If there are people who prevent payment of zakat or who, who speak against it and try pe to stop people from paying it, then Allah Ta'ala glorified and exalted says that his punishment would be imminent. And Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam therefore in Dua'i Kumail teaches us to say Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunub al-lati tunzilu al-niqam Of course we need not do this at all. We need not preach non-payment of zakat. But even if we have ma'ad Allah ta'ala even if that wrong has been perpetrated Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam in Dua'i Kumail says Seek forgiveness from Allah, glorified and exalted, and Allah will forgive, and we will see those provisions in the Quran, which will be, which will come up in in the later portions of the Kumail, in which Allah promises to forgive our our sins, as as He does in 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 the Quran. Well, so Amir al muminin al Islam says, even if you've done that wrong, perpetrated that wrong, seek forgiveness from Allah. Uh, for having for having stopped people paying from zakat from for from having uh, deprived those who are entitled to zakat from receiving zakat indeed indeed the reflection uh, of thought is that if all muslims who are capable of paying zakat did pay their legitimate zakat there would be no poor muslim in the world and it is no surprising that such a thought would be would be canvassed and propelled because Allah glorified and exalted would, if he created poor people, have made provision for them also. And indeed, made provision for the rich people, a test for them that they have got this na'mah, they've got this privilege, do their stand in the path of Allah glorified and exalted. Money which Allah has given them <coughs> with... <coughs> with inspiration to spend in that way from Allah himself. Hence the great importance that these sins should not be taken lightly and should be avoided altogether for our own good. And the last of the sins that have been set out under this, under this head is giving of short measure. That ayah of Quran that is so famous, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَأَقِيمُ الْوَزْنَ بِالْقِسْتِ وَلَا تُخْسِرُ الْمِيزَانِ وَأَقِيمُ الْوَزْنَ بِالْقِسْتِ And give what is, what, is, what, is, what is due justly. Do not give short of measure. If you have sold a kilo, do not give 900, 900 um, and, not, and, and not a full thousand. So this is, this is the teaching and, and the ayah that I cited is, is an ayah which is very famous uh, of Surah Rahman in which Allah says, give, do not give short of measure. وَلَا تُخْسِرُ الْمِيزَانِ Do not give short of, of, of the true measure that is due from you. This is not only a question of honesty, it is a question of justice between the two parties, between the seller and, 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 and the buyer. And indeed, a question of doing what is fair, what is fair. Behaving fairly in commercial transactions is so important. It is, it is, it is one of the bases of peace and justice in society. And Allah glorified and exalted commends it and, and exhorts us to behave in that way in, in the holy book 
the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, and the Imma alayhim salam in their hadith exhort us to, to, towards that uh, friends of justice and warn us that if we do not, then the punishment from Allah is nigh. And indeed, one can see that these punishments are worldly, worldly reactions, worldly consequences of doing that kind of wrong. If you give short of measure, then the consequence may well be that the purchaser will sue you in a court, take you to a kawdi and, and, and have you prosecuted. And the consequences of that would be that you lose your reputation as a businessman. People refuse to come to your shop saying he gives short of measure. He is not just in, the, in, 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 what, in what he gives uh, for the payment of money that he, that he takes. Immediate, immediate uh, consequences flow, but worse consequences can flow. We are discussing this example under the, under the context of a, 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 a thumb. That, that the consequence is tunzilu niqam Allah's, Allah's calamity follows. Strong word, niqam, that, that Allah uses. Because it may not only be losing that particular customer, it may be losing uh, numerous customers. But apart from that, a criminal prosecution could flow for, 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 for giving short of measure. And the consequence can, could be a sentence of imprisonment. So calamity can befall a person for behaving in this way. The punishment of the Day of Judgment still awaits him. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, when he has the opportunity to teach us to pray and, and, and supplicate to Allah glorified and exalted, takes care to teach us to pray for those things that really are beneficial to us. Hence you can see the mercy of, of Allah flowing through the mercy of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam in taking the opportunity to teach us what to pray from Allah glorified and exalted. And in the process to remind us that these wrongs are heinous wrongs and we should keep away from it. The important thing is that society should flourish, that there should be justice in, on, on earth. That is the scheme of Allah glorified and exalted. And that is, that is the scheme that is propelled by his representatives on earth, by the true imams, by the true worshippers of Allah who are out to, to, to teach his, his uh, uh, creatures to be on the straight path. Hence the teachings of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam on, on this particular point. So those were the six examples that are given in a hadith of, of, uh, of uh, illustrations for the commentary on that prayer that is taught by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam saying Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunub al-lati tunzilu al-niqam I seek forgiveness of Allah from those sins that bring down calamity from, from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the next, the next dua then in dua al is Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunub al-lati tughayiru al-niqam what a, what a um, frightful dua. O oh Allah, forgive me those sins that reverse, that reverse divine's favors. Well, well, that is, that is, that, that, that is, um, that is extremely serious. If Allah has already given us a blessing and then we behave in a way in which there is a reversal of that blessing, then, then, what have we benefited? Isn't that, isn't that a serious error on our part? That which, we, which Allah in his, in his mercy has decided to give to us, we do not, we do not um, cherish, we do not appreciate and act contrary to it. Hence, so important that we, 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 we preserve the goodness that Allah glorified and exalted has given us. Goodness comes from him, from Allah, glorified and exalted. And when he has given us that goodness, we must preserve it. Lest there is a reversal for it. As, as, as the Imam says, Allahumma firli adhunub allati tu ghayiru ni'am. Lest that ni'mah, that blessing is reversed by Allah, glorified and exalted. Well, next time when we meet, we will consider 
the, those sins that cause such a reversal. In the meantime, may Allah give us the tawfiq to appreciate the blessings that he bestows on us and to act in this world in keeping with the morality of those blessings. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.